everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, the Oliver Twist, the boarding house rules, the five and one. Um, I'm sure you've seen variations of this drill. Basically, what it is is everybody gets firsts before anybody gets seconds. So, as you run through it, it's it's a really good drill to teach you to transition from target to target. Uh, it does presuppose some things, and it doesn't address reality as well as it could. It's still a great drill. Uh, because it introduces you, gives you that, that foundation for transitioning from target to target. and also teaches you target discrimination. In fact, that we want to put rounds on each threat as soon as possible. However, uh, real life being real life, we may be able to modify this drill to make it a little more realistic. Now, when, you th when we think about confronting multiple attackers, are they going to be presented like this? It's possible uh, because there's so many thousands and hundreds of thousands of variables that can go into every single self-defense situation. We can't say for certain. However, prudence dictates that we shouldn't train and shouldn't practice for them always presenting to us in a 180 flank. Um, they're not going to be online. They may not be squared to us. Another thing to consider is what if one threat is closer to you than another one? Or if one threat is armed with a gun and another one with a knife? I use these UTC tack drop targets because they come with arms. The arms can either have a gun or a knife. Now, when I set my practice drills up or I have someone set them up for me and then I address them, that way it's a little more uh, organic because I don't know what I'm getting into. Uh, it makes it more realistic for me. With that ability, I can have one target with a knife, one target with a gun. Obviously, the target with the gun is going to take a higher priority most of the time because the guy with the knife has to physically touch me to hurt me, whereas the guy with the gun can shoot me from pretty much any distance um, as far as reality is concerned. Okay, just getting into this, um, two targets. I took one target away, but you can have two, you can have three, you can have four, five, six, however many you want. They're still online as far as um, they're both squared to me. However, one is closer than the other. Now, when I came up in the military, especially uh, during basic training and things like that, uh, basic infantry training, is I learned that you know we always shoot the uh, closest target first because it's the larger threat. In this situation, the closest target has a knife. The target slightly behind him has a gun. Now, we all know from the tooler drill, or the 21-foot rule, which isn't a rule, go ahead and Google it, um, this guy can get to me really, really quick. He can move pretty fast. If I've already got my gun out, I have a slight advantage, but he can still close the distance really, really quick. Can he close the distance faster than my threat with the gun? Does my threat with the gun even have to move? And can this guy move faster than a bullet? No, he can't. At least I hope he can, because that would be a horrible, horrible day. This guy is the larger physical threat because he's closer. This guy is the larger lethal threat because he has a gun. So all things being equal, and they never are, I need to put rounds on a firearm threat before I put rounds on a knife threat. Now, is this a realistic drill, realistic scenario? I don't know. It could be. But what it teaches is target discrimination based on the presence of the threat. Proximal threat, lethal threat. They're both... So in this situation, um, while I need to put rounds on him as soon as possible, my larger threat is the guy armed with the gun. He needs to get service first. And depending on the, their distance from me, I might decide to put five, six, seven, eight, maybe half a magazine into the guy with the gun just to get him on the ground before I address the man with the knife unless he comes so close that I feel like I have to move attention to him. Now, in this situation, obviously, we're going to be, want to be moving distance, we want to be lateral movement, movement, or we want to be seeking cover, concealment, whatever we can. Barring those, we have a couple of choices. One is to press our threat, which going up against two bad guys probably isn't such a good idea. The second one is rearward lateral movement as fast as possible. Uh, we want to get distance, distance equals time, time gives us options, options allows us to fight. Now you can see from that example how you can take that drill and modify it to be just slightly more realistic, especially if you have access to an outdoor range, you can really fill this drill out and build on it and make it more and more realistic, more and more challenging, and allow you to train at a higher and higher stress level, practice at a higher stress level. Uh, obviously not everybody has access to an outdoor range. Um, when I started filming drill videos, I wanted to focus on a lot of ones that could be done for indoor ranges. but. The fact is, there's not a whole lot of realistic training you can do at an indoor range. You can work on the fundamentals all day long, but when it comes to free movement and use in cover, concealment, drawn from the holster, reloading, things like that, um, those, those ranges doesn't allow you to do it. So find somewhere where you can shoot outdoors. Uh, even if you're only able to travel there, especially if you live in an urban area, you might have to drive an hour like I do. 
uh, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. If you take self-defense seriously, you're going to want to seek these places out. Even if you only make it out there once or twice a year, it's better than nothing. Now, how can I make this drill a little more difficult? Well, I don't necessarily need to make it more difficult so much as I need to take the drill that I started with and use those same basic goals but change the functionality of the drill to reflect reality just a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, my bad guys, still online. Um, these guys, more or less shoulder to shoulder. I got my guy with the gun. This time he's up here. Knife guy, knife guy. Uh, if you don't have UTC targets, you can make a stencil of a knife, stencil of a gun, and just spray paint it on your targets before you go to the range just to set it up, get your prep time out of the way. Uh, or you can use styrofoam, you can do cardboard cutouts. You can get really, really inventive, even if you're using 2D, on how to run this drill a little bit more realistically. Um, so in this situation, where's my larger threat? I'm still going to say it's the guy with the gun, because the bullets can get to me before the knife does. But how am I going to stack, especially thinking about, not necessarily thinking about ammo conversation, but conservation, but thinking about available ammunition in the magazine. Uh, if you live in a state where you can only use 10 rounds, how are 10 rounds going to best serve these three threats before you're forced to do a reload? Obviously, if they're clo the closer they are to you, the more critical your accuracy is going to be, uh, practically speaking, uh, before that reload has to occur facing three bad guys you're probably going to work through that second magazine you may work through your third hopefully you carry a third if you're in a state where you're only allowed to carry 10 rounds now if you're in the in freer states and you have 15 or 17 or 20 rounds per magazine depending on whatever firearm you carry you have a few more options because you don't have to reload as soon but confronting three threats you need to be aware of ammunition per magazine you're not going to be able to count your rounds so forget about that but you need to address the threats as fast as possible keeping in mind that this guy initially is going to probably require more rounds than my other two guys. So let's see what happens. All right, so working it into some rifle drills, maybe some transition drills. This situation, these targets are pretty good distance away from me depending on where I start and they're pretty far away from each other. Again, does it take reality into account? I think it's more realistic than three targets standing two feet from each other perfectly online directly in front of you while you don't move or hide or go to cover or anything. Um, again, 100,000 variables going into any gunfight, so this is, a, this is a thing where context is very, very important. This drill is going to help us with some skills. It's going to help us with transition, it's going to help us with target discrimination, it's going to help us with pri prioritizing our threats and being aware of our ammo. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run this on the rifle, just to kind of give you an idea of one potential way you could address a situation like this. Alright, so why did I run it the way that I did? Well, you remember from the video, the guy at the gun, he's on the far right. He's my larger threat because he's got a gun. The other two guys have got knives, and they're probably... They probably learn at their own pace uh, because they're that distance from me and they're still attacking a guy armed with a rifle. But again, I set the drill up so I get to kind of pick how things go. Guy with the gun, I'm going to continually come back to him. Um, since these targets are not reactive, they don't go down, I'm going to treat the situation as if I'm shooting somebody and they're really not physically reacting. Even if the gun guy, i got to get rounds on all three targets as quick as possible, but I have the luxury of distance with my guys with the knives. My guy with the gun, not so much. He's going to get more service more often than my knife targets. All in all, every target is going to get shot, and it's going to get shot repeatedly, and it's going to get shot a lot to the everywhere. Um, but that gun target is always going to be my priority, as long as it's still a threat. This is a drill you can stack three, you can build four, five, six targets into it. You can work in no shoots, you can work in cover, you can work in really whatever you want to make this drill more and more realistic. I think one of the best ways to do it is, you know, build yourself a mock little restaurant, a mock little diner, a mock little convenience store right there on the range using barrels and whatever you have available to you. Um, which I had planned on doing for this video, I just didn't have the time. And work it as a realistic situation. Start from a seated position at a table like you're in there having dinner. Is that realistic? Or work it from a gas station line, three and four of your buddies, work that situation. Um, criminals uh, tend, to, tend to work in pairs, tend to work in trios. Uh, we've all seen the videos of three or four guys performing a carjacking. Does that make sense from a profit standpoint? Absolutely not. They're doing it because they're all cowards. Now you, you, uh, you service that first guy, the other ones might bail, but you can't count on it. So we want to train as realistically as possible when it comes to practicing that higher level skill set for moving from threat to threat, let's make that as realistic as possible. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.